Hey everyone, how you doing? My name's uh, Jim Kelly. I am the Banter by Piercing Pagoda Training Manager. Banter is your piercing experts for over 50 years. Today we're gonna cover some FAQ questions about piercings. So I got right here, what is the difference between cartilage piercings and lobes? So lobes are literally just a, just a piece of skin. Um, so it's a little easier to heal in cartilage. For those who are unfamiliar, it's not bone. It's a, it's a common myth that like something in the nose, like a septum or a nostril is a bone. Um, sand cartilage in your nose is in your ears. To keep it simple, it's much thicker than skin and it's not even close to as hard as a bone. So uh, they take a little longer to heal. It's slightly different aftercare and uh, they look a little different when they're healing as well. That's the, that's the big two differences. The uh, lobe is a lot more simple of something to heal for sure. What piercing methodologies are available at Banter? So up until recently, we only offered what, um, I'm just gonna say what people know as the gun. Uh, it, it's, it's called an instrument, it's not a gun, it, it's an instrument. Uh, but now, in the past year, we started offering hollow needle piercings as well. So that's a full suite of body piercings. Um, different locations offer different ones, but every location offers all the ear cartilage you can imagine and everything on your nose for sure. And coming soon, we're gonna be doing some uh, some oral stuff, but mostly just straight tongue and uh, as well as navel piercings. So I got another question here, it's a, it's a hot topic. Is it safe to pierce infants and children? goes right along with that last question. So we do not offer that hollow tip needle piercing for infants and children, so they don't have to worry about that. We do the instrument piercings on the infants and children, and it is safe as long as, you know, it's gonna be up to the parents and, and the children. The, the age difference, obviously, like, much younger, under a year, it's gonna really be up to the parents to take care of the aftercare properly, and that, that's where the safety concerns come in, making sure it's clean properly and all that. Um, and then once they're a little older, you know, if you trust them, to clean it themselves, you know, their new lobe piercings twice a day. Make sure they're doing that and follow up with them and it's absolutely safe. Just uh, aftercare is where the safety really comes into. The, the procedures are, you know, safe on any age for sure. Does it hurt? That, that's, a, that's a question I, I see right here. I mean, you know, you're, if you're asking me, everything hurts. I'm realistic about it, but it's worth it. But to be honest with you, certain things hurt a lot less than others. I can tell you most people, cartilage piercings hurt a little worse than a regular piercing, but what my, my go-to, especially for like the younger, um, I used to get a lot of younger girls getting their belly pierced is, you know, do you really think it hurts that bad? How many friends do you know that have it? You know, they're like, oh, I, I, I know a bunch of friends. I'm like, well, they were all fine, right? I'm gonna tell you, it's, it's only gonna hurt for a second. You're gonna be fine. So the realistic answer is a little bit, but it's worth it. And once it's done, it's done. How long do piercings take to heal? So that one's all over the place, depending on the piercing. There's, there's some more like hardcore piercings that take a long time to heal. Most of that, you're, you're not really gonna see um, upwards of a year, but standard stuff like the lobes, uh, much shorter, you know, four, four to six weeks, you could switch the jewelry out a little longer till they're fully healed. Most of the ear cartilage, about six to eight weeks before you could switch the jewelry out, a little longer for it to fully heal. And then stuff around the, the face, like the lips and stuff, Again, six to eight weeks before you can switch it, but that's not fully healed. Fully healed is closer to three to six months. So, so I, I have a few questions here uh, about healing. You know, we're, we're gonna cover them all at once. It's uh, healing process, what's normal, what's not normal, what are signs of infection, what do I do about infection and all that. So you get pierced, we'll, we'll, call, it, um, we'll call it a lip piercing just because you can visibly see mine. Um, you're gonna go home, you're gonna spray the uh, H2O ocean on it get it real saturated around there. Make sure you wash your hands first. There shouldn't be any crust or build up that early on. So wake up in the morning, same thing. You do it right after the shower and then the opposite time of day. You're gonna do that for really about six to eight weeks and that should really be it. Uh, in the interim, if you have any crust build up or anything, make sure you really saturate the solution and it should just fall off naturally. Anything that doesn't, make sure you get a nice clean Q-tip and really just make sure it comes off. If it's not coming off and it feels more like a scab, you can just leave it. You don't want to pull anything off because just like a regular scab on your arm when you're younger, you know, your parents tell you not to pull it off. You pull it off too early, it scars. Swelling is normal in, in most piercings. Uh, very minimal swelling in cartilage, something like a lip, it swells a good amount. That's why you have that longer bar for when you get pierced. It also, don't be surprised if it doesn't swell for a couple days after you get it. So you get it and you're fine. Three days later, you wake up, it's swollen all the way to the ball on the end. You're a little nervous. Keep cleaning it as long as you don't have any extra pain or anything, you're fine. Swelling will probably go down. Redness, the little yellow crusties I mentioned are all normal for the first few weeks. If that starts coming out of nowhere later or you start having like additional pain that you're not used to, 
If you don't have a follow-up schedule, just make sure you get one and go with your piercer and see how they're feeling about what you think may be infection or, or some sort of extreme agitation. They'll take care of that for you on the spot. And, and if they do think there might be some signs of infection, we're not doctors, we're not medically licensed, so they're gonna recommend you to you know your, your doctor or whatever physician you're in contact with. As long as you're taking care of your piercing properly, infections rare, swelling's normal, uh, agitation. People throw around the words like keloids, this and that, very uncommon. We'll be able to take care of that all, all in stores with your follow-up appointment, really. That's it for now. I hope you guys learned something new. We will uh, definitely be providing more content for you in the future. If anything comes up in the meantime, reach out to your local banter piercer and uh, we will take care of it for you. Thanks everyone.